Imagine you're trying to fill a water bottle while riding a roller coaster. Both you and the bottle are moving, and spilling is likely. In space, spacecraft are zooming around Earth at 17,500 miles per hour and transferring super cold rocket fuel, like liquid oxygen, between them is even trickier because it could evaporate or freeze if not handled perfectly. That's the challenge facing NASA's Artemis III mission. The plan relies on a complex in-orbit refueling system. Multiple tanker starships will launch propellant up to a fuel depot in Earth orbit, where the Starship Human Landing System will then top off its tanks before heading to the moon. This isn't just a neat trick. This refueling capability is absolutely essential to the Artemis architecture. Without it, Starship couldn't make the lunar round trip. However, that's not the most concerning issue raised during a Senate hearing in early September. In fact, no mission has ever refueled a spacecraft in orbit with enough fuel to go to the moon. Past space refueling tests, like NASA's 1981 Space Shuttle mission, where they transferred a small amount of fuel, were tiny compared to what's needed for a lunar trip. Meanwhile, China is pushing hard toward its own lunar mission by 2030. That adds pressure on NASA to avoid risky or unproven technologies. So from a political standpoint, it's not hard to see why some officials would rather lean on safer, existing plans, like the Lunar Gateway Station, which fits neatly with NASA's traditional SLS rocket and Orion capsule programs. These programs already have strong industry and political backing in the U.S. aerospace world. By contrast, in-orbit refueling relies entirely on a new, unproven system SpaceX's Starship. And as history shows, people, especially in government, tend to fear what's new, especially when time and prestige are on the line. So for now, the mood in Washington seems clear. On-orbit refueling? Too risky. Too impractical. Let's stick with what we know. But here's the real question. Is it too early to give up? Isn't it a bit ironic and honestly disheartening that the very nation that landed humans on the moon in 1969 is now hesitating to take on new frontiers while China is boldly charging ahead? It always fascinates me how quickly people label ideas as impractical just because they're new. That mindset, the fear of innovation, is the exact opposite of what got us to the moon in the first place. So is it really too soon to say on-orbit refueling is hopeless? Because, if you look closely, there are signs of real progress and a ray of hope. In Starship's Flight 3, SpaceX successfully demonstrated cryogenic fluid transfer, moving supercold fuel between tanks within the same vehicle while in orbit. That's a big step toward mastering the techniques needed for full-scale orbital refueling. And they're not stopping there. With the recent upgrades on Starship version 2, tested in flights 10 and 11. SpaceX now says they're ready for something much bigger. The first full orbital refueling test using Starship version 3, planned for 2026. Here's the cool part. This test doesn't involve two different spacecraft trying to sync up like the ISS and a visiting vehicle. It's literally Starship docking with itself. According to Elon Musk, this is a much simpler problem. Because we are simply docking with ourselves, this is a much easier problem than docking with the space station, which SpaceX already does several times a year, and he's not alone in that confidence. During the World Space Business Week conference, Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's president, was very clear. We know we can dock two spacecraft, We've flown Dragon to the International Space Station dozens of times already. Indeed, SpaceX has already docked its Crew Dragon with the ISS more than 20 times since 2020. A much harder feat, because the ISS is an international collaboration with systems built by multiple countries. Every docking involves precise navigation, communication protocols, and safety checks, since astronauts are inside. By comparison, 
docking two identical starships in empty space, with no crew on board and no foreign systems to coordinate with, is far simpler. Both vehicles share the same software, design, and control systems, allowing a cleaner, more predictable connection. SpaceX has already proven it can do the hard version, so why doubt its ability to handle the easier one? Additionally, bear in mind that SpaceX has a long history of turning what once seemed impossible into reality. Back in 2014, when NASA awarded contracts under the Commercial Crew Program to develop spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to the International Space Station space station, SpaceX was widely mocked by the old guard of aerospace. At the time, Boeing was considered the undisputed veteran, an industry powerhouse with decades of experience in human spaceflight. SpaceX, by contrast, looked like an upstart, a young and overly ambitious company playing in a league far above its weight. That same year, SpaceX revealed its Crew Dragon spacecraft during a flashy event at its headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Elon Musk stood on stage and said with confidence, You'll be able to land anywhere on Earth with the accuracy of a helicopter, which is something that a modern spaceship should be able to do. This bold statement didn't sit well with everyone. John Elbin, a senior Boeing engineer overseeing its commercial space program, scoffed at SpaceX's progress. He pointed to the company's limited Falcon 9 launch rate and questioned whether it could deliver on its big promises. Referring to the Crew Dragon event, he said dismissively, we go for substance, not pizzazz. In hindsight, Elbon's words didn't age well. Just a few years later, SpaceX made history by launching NASA astronauts aboard Crew Dragon, the first American spacecraft built and operated by a private company to carry humans into orbit. And that spacecraft was certainly not Boeing's Starliner. Since then, Crew Dragon has been flying regular missions to the ISS under NASA's contract while Boeing's Starliner has faced repeated delays, safety concerns, and technical issues. In fact, during one of its troubled test flights, the spacecraft's system malfunctioned so severely that NASA officials later deemed it unsafe for returning astronauts. Another Crew Dragon mission had to be slightly adjusted to bring the stranded crew safely home. SpaceX didn't just beat Boeing, it defied the expectations of the entire industry. It proved that bold innovation can overcome institutional arrogance and outdated assumptions. But SpaceX's victories go far beyond just outpacing a competitor. The company has continuously shattered barriers in human spaceflight itself. In September 2021, the Crew Dragon spacecraft completed Inspiration 4, the first all-civilian orbital space mission in history. Less than a year later, in April 2022, SpaceX launched Axiom-1, the first fully private astronaut mission to the ISS. That success was followed by three more Axiom missions, each expanding the boundaries of commercial human spaceflight. Then came Polaris Dawn in September 2024, a private mission that achieved multiple historic firsts in just five days. Two SpaceX employees flew together to orbit for the first time. The crew reached higher above Earth than any humans since the Apollo era. The mission also set a new record for the farthest distance traveled from Earth by a woman, achieved the highest number of humans in orbit simultaneously, conducted the first private spacewalk, and became the first crewed mission to use Starlink for communications. And most recently, in March 2025, SpaceX launched Fram 2, a privately funded human spaceflight led by entrepreneur Chun Wang. His all civilian crew flew into a polar orbit, another first in human spaceflight history. From launching astronauts to pioneering all private missions and setting orbital records, SpaceX has shown that what once seemed unrealistic can quickly become routine. If history is any guide, calling on-orbit refueling impractical might someday sound as short-sighted as doubting that a private company could build a spaceship at all. Of course, 
The success of the Dragon program is just one of many examples that showcase the breakthrough spirit of SpaceX. That spirit largely comes from Elon Musk himself, the driving force and soul of the company. Musk is famous for his intensity, relentless focus, competitiveness, and willingness to take on extraordinary risks. Whether it's making bold business moves like the Twitter acquisition or designing rockets and self-driving cars, with an unflinching tolerance for failure, he consistently pushes boundaries without worrying too much about the consequences. At the core of Musk's mindset lies a philosophy inspired by video games. According to Walter Isaacson's biography, Musk sees life as a kind of strategy game, one where risk, failure, and adaptation are constant. He's particularly fond of a multiplayer game called The Battle of Polytopia, where players build empires, compete for resources, and fight for survival. Musk has spent countless hours playing it, sometimes even to the point of disrupting his own schedule. But for him, the game isn't just entertainment, it's training. One of the key lessons he draws from it is simple yet profound. Don't fear of losing. You will lose, Musk said. It will hurt the first 50 times. When you get used to losing, you will play each game with less emotion. That perspective perfectly captures how he approached founding SpaceX, arguably one of the riskiest ventures in modern business history. Musk has often admitted that when he started SpaceX, he believed the chances of success were less than 10%. He fully expected to lose his entire investment. He fully expected to lose his entire investment. But instead of being discouraged, he accepted that possibility and moved forward anyway. His belief in humanity's future as a multiplanetary species and his passion for advancing rocket technology outweighed any fear of failure. So he chose to act, even knowing that the most likely outcome was total loss. The early years of SpaceX proved just how risky that decision was. The first few rocket launches ended in explosions, costing millions of dollars and putting the company on the brink of collapse. Public criticism was relentless. Many called Musk reckless or naive, but because he had already gotten used to losing, the emotional impact of each failure was smaller than one might expect. Instead of retreating, Musk and his team treated every explosion as data. Each failure revealed a weakness, and each weakness became an opportunity to improve. They iterated quickly, learning faster than anyone else in the industry. It was like playing a game over and over, losing often, but getting a little better each time until they finally won. Musk also applies what could be called strategic pessimism, accepting the worst possible outcome early so that fear no longer controls the decision-making process. By preparing for failure mentally, he neutralizes its emotional power. It's a kind of exposure therapy for risk. Once you accept that losing is survivable, the fear disappears, and you're free to think clearly and act boldly. That mindset, embracing failure, learning fast, and refusing to quit, has become the foundation of SpaceX's success. It's what turned impossible goals, like landing rockets or flying civilians to space, into everyday reality.